my dad coached me um, in uh, Little League and uh, coached me in uh, football as well. So kind of followed in his footsteps um, around the area. He was a, a great coach. Everybody admired him and uh, all his players loved him. And I saw that and I just you know, thought it would be following his footsteps. A large reason why I came to Flagler's for running and um, throughout my five years here it was such a big part of my life and it was crazy to me like how you just graduate after four years and you just leave and then it's over and I knew I wasn't ready for that which made me do a fifth year and I would have done six if I could but I figured the only way I can kind of like stay involved in the sport and be as close as a student athlete as possible is just you know coaching it and seeing other athletes grow and kind of not live through them, but you know, still be a part of you know the sport at the college level. Well, my college coach told me that I should be a coach, and um, she had found some interviews for me to um, be a part of. And I was like, "No, I'm going to be a high school guidance counselor and coach high school." And she's like, "No, like you should be a college coach. And when you have a great mentor, you listen to them and you do what they tell you." And I interviewed for a college coaching job and, and that's how I stepped into it. I would say that um, we're surrounded by a lot of athletes with more of an internal drive to succeed. I think the, the kind of population and generation we're dealing with are very overachieving people and so I find less that we have to push our athletes to succeed. They have a little bit more of an internal mechanism. I think it's more about motivating them and finding what their passions are and helping them succeed to be successful in their role in their situation um, I'd say that you know my, my push for them is to help them identify what they're good at help them to create strategies on what to work on and this could be mentally you know physically technically tactically and, and then give them a plan for success. Uh, we beat JHS first game of the season this year, and um, it was just kind of like, we've got 24 more games, you know. Uh, you, you'll play them again, you'll see them again, and um, just move on to the next game. Anything can happen in high school baseball, um, so you just you can't get cocky or the big head. I mean, that'll, that'll end up biting it pretty quickly. We have, um, this would be, I, I hope we get more media to cover this, but we adopted a child in the community. Her name's Lucy, you see us setting up for it, and I was talking to that group. Lucy was diagnosed with brain cancer, and she's terminal, and she's six. And her hashtag is Lucy Strong on Facebook and Instagram, and we get to officially adopt her to our program. Like, this kid's resiliency and what her parents go through like on a daily basis, like we've only interacted with them on probably three different occasions. Like you, you're just like, wow, like, you know, and it's so neat to be able to like invest our time and our energy in other people like who need that, you know, and I, and I, and I feel like when you take again the focus off, like we got crushed by Notre Dame, you know, on Sunday. You know, and you're just like, oh, it feels terrible, you're angry, you know, like you make it so much more than it is. And I'm like, like, just let it go, like mm -hmm. reset. Like we've, we got to focus on Lucy. Like she was just in the hospital last night getting new staples in her head. You know, like put it all in perspective, people. Like we have another game Thursday, we're fine. You know, like we'll reset and, you know, get it to happen. But we just make it so much more than it is sometimes. And... Um, and athletics does that, right? Like there's a scoreboard, like you're racing, there's a time. But at the end of the day, like if you don't do well, then you're learning something from it to get better for the next time. We learn way more through our adversity than we do our successes. With running, like in general, running is not so much fun, like training, but when you get on the starting line and you beat people and you win, it's like, wow, this is why I spend hours and hours every day recovering, maybe not going to Disney and walking around because it's not good for my feet, but you know, this is why I do it. So kind of just like helping them not dwell on it and not, you know, consistently like think about how poor they did in the race and kind of just thinking about ways they can fix it.
Yeah, so k is really nice because as a female athlete, it's really nice to be able to go to another female athlete that might understand problems that are unique to females in sports. So k is someone that I can go to when I need a positive voice in my head. She's also close to our age, so it's nice to get her perspective on things. And since she did run at Flagler and she got the experience, she always has really good advice to give. Dwelling about it is not going to change what just happened or what they just ran and hyperventilating about it and just constantly being down is not going to help them get more fit or like make them want to race you know kind of just brush it away and just go back to the drawing board and continue training and maybe they could have recovered better after workouts or you know brought a snack and eat that right after a workout as soon as you just go to the well on a certain workout and just the little things like going back and like revising what went wrong and then having them fix it and then once they get back on the starting line if they succeed after that you're like okay wow I'm back in it like mentally you're just way more motivated you love the sport more like no one likes to fail. We, and we were at a small school here at PK so basically I have whoever walks through the front gate that's that's who I have I don't go out and pursue players or anything like that so um, I just kind of um, Sometimes it's got to start completely over with the players, you know. Um, a lot of them do play travel ball. Travel ball coaching is different from high school coaching. So uh, travel ball philosophy is a lot different than mine. So have to get that mindset changed around. But to me, I just think I'm kind of a more, I'd say, more laid back kind of a, a coach than some of the others in the area. Just one more time. We got two hours still. I want to do this one more time, then I want to hit, okay? All right, let's get out there. Take your time. You're not going to get screamed at by me. I know it's been a week. Let's uh, well, I haven't really had that many different coaches. He's been my coach since like sixth grade, but it's definitely a lot, I like him a lot more than most of my coaches because most of my other coaches, like my old travel coaches, he doesn't yell at us at all, that much. He yells at us, but not that much. And he doesn't make us run a lot, which I really like. Short answer is, and I think Coach Beal kind of pulled this probably back when he was at GW or like back in his other coaching days where there's two things that we kind of look for, and that's great attitude and great effort and then I think if you just focus on those two big principles like you're gonna be a great teammate you're gonna be successful I think it kinda covers all the parts about being like a true successful student athlete and in recruiting it's tough though I mean sometimes you have to recruit a lot sometimes you only need five or six for the next class but no matter what you have to show each recruit that they're all the same and that you truly care about them no matter what they're doing outside of running and what their best times well, are. Well, k was on the team before me, so she kind of knows what the student athlete life is like, and she's really inspirational to hear her stories from her time at Flagler, and she's very encouraging. She always helps us. She's always there to put a smile on our faces during the hard workouts, and she just inspires me every day. I feel like at the D2 level in general, it's just more of like family-based. Like, it's not a business. It's more about like of course, like being com competitive and like winning and succeeding, but we have to kind of take, I would say, spend more time with them and kind of not nurture them, but like make sure that they're growing at a rate that is best for them. And a lot of the times they're just coming to us with problems and then we just try our best to kind of help them, you know, and guide them to where, wherever it helps them. Um, but I would say, like, we don't really, like, seek it or we're not, like, totally going out of our ways and, like, you know, being those figures. It kind of just happens and falls into place. I don't treat it like a business, and it's not a transaction. Our job is to change lives in a positive way through a sport that we love, and it's, to me, about a, a, a culture. It's about creating a culture where high performance and um, being on the same page with our goals and... Um, our culture is family, love, trust, lead, serve, and faith. So we try to embody that, not just through what the words are, but through actions that we live. And, and then we have the on-field component. So you know we're working towards achieving certain goals 
on the field. You know, we, we have goals in our conference to win conference championships and be a top 20 program. So I think a lot of the difference, you know, is that the approach to those goals that every college coach would have in the country is a different process for us because it's at, at the basis of, of ours. It's about people and relationships. And I think a lot of coaches just make it about the business of lacrosse and the transaction of who can get the job done versus it being very much more of a team success um, and working together towards your goals, not just having talent on your team. Sports is an outlet for a lot of people, whether they're, it's academic stress or personal problems. So it's letting them know that that's, that's what it's here for, but that there's a lot of grace and, and ability for us to be able to be real. Life is real, problems are real. We all experience them, even coaches. And if we can communicate them and provide resources to help support them, then I, I think that um, being a part of team is a real gift because it's like a family.